Thank you, very much. Thank you everyone for uh, coming to this presentation. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Ternon and I'm a software engineer by profession, but I also have a passion for uh, languages, as everyone here, and more specifically East Asian languages. And uh, today I'm going to talk about CJKV Dict, which is basically a, a small dictionary for polyglots that I created uh, if you're learning Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and or Vietnamese at the same time, as you'll be able to discover throughout the presentation. Okay, so before we start talking about the dictionary itself, is anyone able to tell me what this map depicts, what it represents? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese culture. Uh huh. Yeah, more specifically, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, well, that's, that, that's the idea. It's actually a map of the Sinosphere. And the Sinosphere is the region of the world in which China has historically had a very important uh, linguistic and cultural influence. So, um, yeah, what happened is that throughout the centuries, Chinese characters and many words of Chinese origin have been imported into uh, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese. And as a result of this massive import of vocabulary and characters, uh, there is now a large proportion of words of Chinese origin in the vocabulary of Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese. And these words make up about 60% of the J Japanese vocabulary, two-thirds of the Korean vocabulary, and about one-third of the Vietnamese vocabulary. And uh, yeah, a direct result of this massive import of vocabulary is that there are now many common words between Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese. And one example is this word, which means all or everything. So yeah, as you know, it can be a chenpu in Mandarin Chinese, but it also has other readings in Cantonese and other regional Chinese languages. I'm not going to, going to attempt to pronounce this because I don't speak Cantonese. Uh, it's pronounced Zenbu in Japanese, Zhongbu in Korean, and you can also pronounce it in Vietnamese. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and this property, this property of having uh, Chinese characters that represent the same word in multiple languages is very interesting if you're learning multiple of these languages at the same time. So, and I actually took advantage of this property myself because I've been learning Mandarin, Japanese, and uh, Korean at the same time. So, to figure out what words can be shared between these languages, what I've been doing is using multiple dictionaries to look up the common words between these languages. So, I used um, MDBG for Mandarin, a dictionary called jisho.org for Japanese, and a dictionary called Naver for Korean. So if you're learning some of these languages, you might have heard of these dictionaries and even used them yourself. Uh, but they weren't exactly designed to be used the way I was using them. So I'll show you what I was doing. Let's say you open Naver dictionary, so a Korean dictionary, and you look up the word Ilbon. So you're able to discover that it means Japan, and that it can be written with these two Chinese characters. So if you copy these Chinese characters, you open another dictionary, like jisho.org, and you paste them into jisho.org, ta-da, it works. You, you realize that they can also be used in Japanese to also mean Japan, and that they can be read Nihon. Another example, if you use a Chinese dictionary, so MDBG here, if you look up uh, these two Chinese characters, you're able to learn that they're, they're pronounced wenhua and that they mean culture or civilization. So here again, you can copy them and paste them in, in another dictionary, like jisho.org. So if you do this, you're able to learn that they're read bunka and that they also mean civilization or culture in Japanese. So yeah, as you can see so far, so good. This trick of using multiple Chinese, well, Chinese, Japanese, Korean dictionaries seems to be uh, pretty nice and seems to work out pretty well. But let's try a couple of other examples. So if I 
uh, look up this, uh, this word, Sihon, in a Korean dictionary. So I'm able to learn that it means exam or test, and that it's written with these Chinese characters. All right, so I copy them, and I paste them into jisho.org. And this is what I get. Sorry, couldn't find any words matching these two characters. So what does that mean? Does that mean that these characters do not exist in Japanese and that this word does not exist? Well, not exactly, because they're basically the Chinese characters for the word shiken, which also means exam in Japanese. Okay, let's try something else. If I search for these two characters on jisho.org, I'm able to learn that they are pronounced keizai and that they mean uh, economy, economics. So if I copy them and I paste them into a Chinese dictionary like MDBG, I get this message, no results found. And that's pretty strange because I was pretty sure that they are the Chinese characters for the word Jingji, for the Mandarin word Jingji. So yeah, as you can see this trick of using multiple uh, dictionaries to look up common Chinese character words does not always work. Do you have any idea why? Mm, not exactly. No. Because in different languages over the time there were many characters and they have changed their No, 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 no. Yeah, yes but no, it's not, it's not the reason. Actually it's because Chinese characters were simplified in Chinese and in Japanese. So what happened is that in mainland China uh, so the mainland Chinese authorities created a set of Chinese characters called Jian uh, Zi, uh, which are a simplified version of the traditional, well, the historical forms of Chinese characters. And they did something similar in Japan. They created a set of Chinese characters uh, called Shinjitai that are also a simplified form of the traditional Chinese characters. And one of the major issues with these simplification schemes is that they happened independently from one another. So as a result, if you try to look up these two characters in a Japanese dictionary, you're not going to get any results because the Japanese dictionary would expect this form of characters and vice versa. So this is basically what I was trying to do. I was trying to look for these Japanese simplified character forms into a Chinese dictionary, but it didn't work out. But actually, it's only part of the problem. Because uh, if you look at Korean and Vietnamese, Chinese characters were not simplified, but they were completely eliminating, eliminated sorry, from the writing system. So in Korea, all Sino-Korean words were changed from Chinese characters to Hangul, the uh, Korean phonetic writing system. I know that's the case in North Korea, but even as, uh, in the 80s and 90s, like, it's, it's still see uh, Chinese yeah. characters. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's declining. And nowadays, you basically only see Hangul in Korea. Newspapers, signs, Yeah, yeah, but very, very sparsely. Like, if you look at a standard Korean text, you will only see Hangul, basically. And yeah, the same thing happened with, with Vietnamese. So, in Vietnamese, Chinese characters were changed to a phonetic writing system, to the Vietnamese alphabet. That's based on the, on the Roman alphabet. Okay, so if you look at the simplified Chinese form, the simplified Japanese form, the phonetic form in Korean and the phonetic form in Vietnamese, if you were to find a kind of common denominator between all these forms, what could you do? Well, it's very simple. You can just revert to the traditional Chinese character form. And based on this principle, you can implement a language switching mechanism. So if you take one of the simplified or phonetic forms, you can then convert it to ch traditional Chinese characters so that you can then reconvert it to another uh, simplified and phonetic form. So by doing this, you can switch between Chinese and Korean or Vietnamese and Japanese, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, the thing is, this language switch switching mechanism is slightly uh, difficult to implement because first of all Chinese and Japanese dictionaries do, often do not include uh, traditional forms of Chinese characters they only either include the uh, simplified form uh, yeah so yeah it's the case for the uh, jisho.org dictionary that only includes the Japanese simplified forms 
MDBG is an exception. It includes both uh, simplified and traditional, but there are a lot of Chinese dictionaries for learners that only include simplified. So to solve this problem, you would need some kind of simplified to traditional converter. But these converters are, yeah, they're a little bit difficult to use. And uh, yeah, they're not really accessible to learners who don't have like deep knowledge of Chinese characters. And same goes for Korean and Vietnamese because Korean or Vietnamese dictionaries rarely include Chinese characters at all. So yeah, you would need some kind of phonetic to character converter, which is even more difficult to find and to implement because sometimes you have many Chinese characters, well, you have a, a, like a phonetic transcription can correspond to many combinations of Chinese characters. So yeah, if you want to implement this language switching mechanism, you would have to use a large number of tools. And even if you have all the tools you require, uh, yeah, it's gonna take you some time because you need to manually convert from simplified to traditional, then to phonetic again, etc. So it's very cumbersome. So I thought to myself, what if this language switching mechanism could be implemented in a single step, so in a single, single click of the mouth? And this is when I got the idea for CJK Vidict. So CJK Vidict is basically an online tool that's available, available sorry, at cjkv-dict.com. It's completely for free, anyone can use it. And I will now guide you through all of its features so that you can know what it can do. Right. So the main feature of the dictionary is that when you search for a specific word in Chinese characters, it gives you uh, results for Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese. So for example, if I open the dictionary and I search for these two characters, then I'll get information of what this word means in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese. So you get the pronunciation in Mandarin, Cantonese, and all the other languages. And you also get information about uh, simplified Chinese character forms, which is very useful if you're learning Chinese with simplified characters, or if you're learning Japanese, so that you can recognize this word even when it's using a simplified uh, Chinese character set. And speaking of simplified characters, one of the coolest features of CJK Vidict is that it can automatically convert simplified Chinese characters to traditional Chinese characters. So if I look up these two characters in the dictionary, the dictionary is able to detect that they are a simplified Chinese form, and instead it will look up the traditional form. So that will allow you to not only figure out that this, these are the Chinese characters for the, the, the Chinese word Tianhua, that means telephone, but you will also learn that this word also exists in all other languages, something you would not have been able to do if you only had the simplified Chinese form and that they also mean telephone in all other, all, of, all other languages, sorry. Okay, so of course, this feature also works for simplified Japanese characters. So if I look up these two characters, CJK Vidict is able to detect that they are a simplified, uh, simplified form. So instead, it will look up the traditional form. And Thanks to this, you will not only learn that they're the Chinese characters for, well, the kanji in Japanese for the word genki. That means something like vitality. It's basically what you say in o genki desu ka in Japanese when you, when you greet someone. And you will learn that this word also means uh, the same thing in Chinese and in Korean. It's so it's pronounced uh, yuan qi in Chinese and wengi in Korean. Just wait a minute. Sometimes, sometimes CJK Vidict's, well, yeah, actually, if, if it doesn't know whether or not a word exists in one language, it will simply tell you. So in this case, it was not able to find any word in the database. So it will tell you no result found in Vietnamese dictionary. It could be that this word exists in Vietnamese, but well, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. Okay, then I need to extend the database, good. <laughs> And uh, yeah, another interesting feature is that CJK Vidict is also able to automatically detect what, what I call Chinese character variants. So uh, yeah, let me explain what that means by showing you an example. If you look at the word for inspection, 
When you write this word in traditional Chinese characters, so even when taking into account the Chinese character simplification and elimination reforms, you will get this form for Chinese and this form for Japanese. So as you can see, these two characters are written in a slightly different way, but they basically mean the same thing. So, and this is what Chinese character variants are. They're basically two ways to write the same character. And uh, so yeah, the cool thing with CJK Vedict is that if you enter one of these two forms, it will automatically let you know that the word has a variance and it will display uh, the word that match these variant forms as well. So you will not only get results for the basic form here in Chinese and Vietnamese, but also for the variant form in Japanese and Korean in this case. Yeah, of course, you can also search for words in Chinese characters using their phonetic transcription. Um, so, yeah, for Chinese, you can search for Juin Fu Hao, so Bo Po Mofo, the phonetic transcription used in Taiwan for Mandarin. You can use Han Yu Pinyin without spaces, either with numbered tones or without tones. And you can use uh, Yutping, which is the Cantonese romanization system. Uh, yeah, without spaces, either with tones or without tones. When it comes to Japanese, you're allowed to use kana, the phonetic Japanese writing system, and you can search for romanized Japanese using the Hepburn romanization system, which is basically the most widely used. Uh, as for Korean, you can search for words using Hangul, the phonetic writing system used in Korean, or you can use the revised romanization system, which is the most common used uh, romanization um, system for Korean. And last but not least, if you want to search for Vietnamese words, you can use the Vietnamese alphabet, uh, either with diacritics or even without. Okay, so when you search for a word using a phonetic tr transcription, so here if, if I search for Dien Hoa, for example, <coughs> Uh, in Kana, the dictionary is able to detect that they're the Kana transcription of these two characters. So you will then not only get the results for Japanese, but also for Chinese, Korean and Vietnamese of the word that uses the same characters. Right, so there are a couple of other search features that you can use, such as, um, yeah, you can search for English words, for example, telephone, if you write telephone, you will then get all words that have the word telephone in their definition. You can use wildcards. Uh, you can use them either, well, after the word. So if you search for Zhongguo star, you will get results matching Zhongguo, Zhongguo ren, Zhongguo yu, etc. If you search for star gakko, you will get like words that end with gakko. So gakko, shou gakko, koto gakko, etc. And if you search for star testa, you will get like results that match anything containing test inside a word. So test, testing, contest, protesting, etc. Uh, yeah, another useful feature is that CJKV Dict can also give information about individual characters comprised in a word. So for example, if I use the word telephone, I'm able to discover that it has, uh, that the first character means electricity and that the second character means talk and I can get all the pronunciation in all uh, various languages of the sinosphere. And of course, simplified forms, either simplified Chinese or simplified Japanese if they exist. All right, so I think now you've had a good overview of the dictionary. So yeah, you are basically ready to use it yourselves, congratulations. But before you do this, there's something important I need to tell you, and this is what CJK Vedict is not. CJK Vedict is not a Chinese to Japanese, Japanese to Korean, or Korean to Vietnamese dictionary, or any other combination of these languages for that matter. And why is that? That's because sometimes the same Chinese character means something completely different in different languages. So in other words, there are a lot of false friends between all these languages. But the good news is that CJK Vedic can also help you to detect false friends. So for example, if I search for these two characters, I'm able to learn that they're the characters for Kungbu in Korean, which means to study, so as in Kungbu Hada, studying. Um, but in Japanese, they mean, they are read Kufu and they mean to 
to solve something ingeniously or scheming. Whereas in Chinese, they read Kung Fu, and they mean something like time or labor. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, effort or labor, yeah. So as you can see, having the same Chinese characters in a word is not a guarantee that it's going to have the same definition in all languages, right? All right, another example, if I search for these two characters, they read Benkyo in Japanese, like Benkyo series to study in Japanese, but in Chinese and in Vietnamese, they mean something like to do reluctantly, unwillingly, etc. <laughs> so yeah, unless, unless you really hate studying, unless you really hate studying, we can safely say that they refer to completely different concept, right? Um, yeah, and sometimes they can even be funnier than that. So if I look at these two characters, for example, <laughs> okay, some people already know. So in Japanese, they read tegami, they mean letter. But in Chinese, they mean toilet paper. And yeah, they're like shoju. So unless you want to ask your Chinese friends whether or not they've received the toilet paper you sent them a while ago, do yourselves a favor and don't use CJK Dict as a Chinese to Japanese dictionary. You've been warned. All right, so before we wrap things up, I'd just like to give you a quick summary of all the features of CJK Dict. So as you understood, its main purpose is to look up words in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese written with the same Chinese characters. It's able to automatically convert simplified characters to traditional characters. It's able to automatically detect Chinese character variants. You can also search for Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese uh, words using a wide range of phonetic transcription, of standard phonetic transcriptions. And it helps you to detect false friends. Once again, it's available online at cjkv-dict.com. You can also like our page on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, sorry, cjkvdict. Uh, so it's facebook.com slash cjkv.dict. And you can follow cjkvdict on Twitter. There it is. So it's uh, twitter.com slash cjkv underscore dict. So you can see the underscore, but it's hidden here. And I particularly recommend you to do so, so to follow us on Twitter, to like the Facebook page, because I regularly post words that have the same or similar meaning in, um, in all of these languages, in all the CJKV languages, and that are written with the same Chinese characters. Okay, so we are now reaching the end of the presentation, but before I start answering your question, there is one more thing I'd like to tell you. So, yeah, what if you want to use CJKV Dict, but you don't have access to the internet where you are? Well, the good news is that CJKV Dict is also available as an iOS and Android app. Uh, the app contains an offline database for the dictionary, so you can use it even when you don't have access to the internet. And you can download it on the App Store, on the Apple App Store, and on the Google Play Store. And the best thing is, it's available completely free of charge. So if you want to, fin to, to financially contribute to CJKV Dict, there is a possibility for you to do so. You can click on the donate button on the web page, but no pressure, it's completely voluntary. All right, so before I let you go, there's actually one other thing I'd like to tell you. <laughs> um, so yeah, you probably remember that during the presentation, I told you that traditional Chinese characters act as a common denominator between all the languages of the Sinosphere, right? Between Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese. And as a matter of fact, uh, traditional Chinese characters are fundamental. They're very important when you're learning uh, these languages, especially when you're learning many of them. And if you want to learn why, I recommend you to read the book I have just published. It's called, yeah. So the title is Traditional Chinese Characters, A Translingual Writing System. And it's available for purchase on Amazon, so on all these websites in the US, Canada, UK, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, and even in Japan. Sorry, can you see the title? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. It's Traditional Chinese Characters, a Translingual Writing System. Okay, so I'd like to thank you for, uh, for your attention. Great. I'll read out the most popular ones um, and 
Emmanuel is actually going to mm -hmm. keep them for the recording yep. because I don't have a microphone. Um, there's some there's some very positive comments here, so one of your friends <laughs> should get a screenshot of this so that you can put it on your website or something. Someone thinks you're a genius. Okay, so well, thank you. <laughs> Um, so, how do you handle the cases when one simplified character corresponds okay. to several traditional Okay, all right, so I'll, I'll repeat the, the question. So, how do you handle situations when you have one simplified character that corresponds to many traditional characters? So, usually, the, the yeah, when this happens, in most cases, um, the character correspond the simplified character corresponds to multiple traditional ones only on its own, but when it's inside a word, you can usually uh, match it to one of these possibilities. So in 90% of situations it's possible, but there are some situations in which like even when you have multiple characters, you can have multiple combination in traditionals. In this case, it will simply show you the whole list. So you will have, for example, uh, two words in Chinese, but this automatic a uh, simplified to traditional conversion feature will not necessarily work because you need like to be able to match one unique word for this to work. Um, Gaston wants to know how many characters it contains. Uh, I haven't counted them, <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically I reused open source databases for, for the dictionary, so you've probably heard of them. Uh, CCCDict for, for Chinese, JMDict for Japanese, there's a database called King Dict for Korean, and also use Wiktionary for uh, Vietnamese and for Korean. Uh, yeah, they're on, on the website. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you click the About link, then you will have the whole list. Uh, Andre would like to know: Are you thinking about also containing two noms? Yeah, characters? that's an excellent question. So, yeah, am I thinking of containing two noms? So. Uh, I would rather say no, unfortunately, and the reason behind it is because, uh, first of all, they're, they only concern Vietnamese, and so they're not really translingual, and the main purpose of the dictionary is to show like the, the common words between, the whole, uh, between all languages. And the second reason is that uh, they are not really properly standardized at the moment, so it's difficult to find a proper database and, and proper fonts that can support these, uh, these genome characters, so the Vietnamese. Andre, for the second question, yeah. um, about whether you have included romanization for the Japanese and Korean results, he thinks that um, would be useful. They're included in the database, but they're not displayed because uh, it's actually slightly better when you're learning Japanese or Korean to get used to the romanization system for that language, especially for Korean. Romanized Korean can get really messy, so, but maybe in the future I could probably add the option to, to add the possibility to display romanized uh, readings, yeah. Um, so going back to the um, open source databases, mm -hmm. yeah. Carlton has asked how much cleaning did you know, need to do to the open source databases? Uh, oh yeah, 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 that's an excellent question. So for, um, okay, so yeah, two things. There is cleaning and processing. One of the databases, the database for Korean, was uh, very messy, very old. It hadn't been updated since 2011 or something like this. And there were a, a lot of corrupted entries. So I had a lot of, you know, I, I needed to, to manually clean uh, many of them. I'm not 100% uh, done. So if you, if you look up some Korean words, you know, sometimes you see there's no definition or the definition is a bit strange. But it's difficult to maintain a database of this size on, on my own. So, yeah. And uh, the second thing is processing. So, for example, the uh, Chinese database contains both uh, simplified and traditional, so I could use it just as is. But when it comes to the Japanese, I had to convert the all characters from simplified to traditional using a tool I made on my own. Yeah, I even made like a Python library just for that, just for that purpose, yeah. Uh, someone's asked, can you look up characters by entering the Vietnamese spelling? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what you can do. Yeah, as I said, you can use any... Uh, if the character it can be written in, in Hantu, basically, not in Chunom, like in, uh, in translingual, uh, like Chinese characters, then you can usually match the phonetic reading to the character. Yeah, it works. 
here's a good question. Does it handle segmenting strings of characters into possible words? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually there are very few dictionaries that can do that and yeah, it's, it's quite tricky because sometimes, you know, that would correspond, that would be right in, in one language but only the other, so segmenting a phrase in multiple languages at the same time is, is, is quite tricky, so no, not yet. Um, have you thought of expanding the database to include sentence examples in English? Uh, no, that's actually a good idea. I know that there are some databases of, uh, like, I know the Tatoeba database so for Japanese, right? Uh, but no, yeah, but yeah, maybe one day, who knows? Well, this is probably a related question then. Mm -hmm. um, how much time did you spend on it? And oh, have a lot. you got any tips for time management? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give up on your social life. <laughs> no, but you know, it's like, it's like what people say, when you love something, you don't, count really, you don't really count the time you're investing in. So, yeah, sometimes I could just spend like a whole weekend just coding for, I don't know, 10 hours each day. So, yeah. So, I think at the moment, the last question, mm -hmm. um, maybe you could expand on this and tell us a little bit about your language yeah. learning journey. Yes. Do you think it's feasible for us non-geniuses to study? I'm not a genius, guys. <laughs> three languages at once. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's not only feasible, and if you use tools like this to really manage to, to make mnemonic associations between all these various languages, you can do it. It's like basically learning uh, French, Spanish, and Italian, you know, like, you need to be aware of false friends, like preservativo, for example, you know. And, uh, but it's, yeah, it's the same, kind of the same concept with East Asian languages, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came uh, to the yeah, I, I started with Japanese. Uh, yeah, actually, it's, it's, yeah, it's mostly because of Japanese, because, you know, when you learn Japanese, you need to learn kanji, so Chinese characters. And when I started learning Korean, I discovered, you know, the similarities between the vocabularies and I was using this trick of using of typing Japanese into a, a Korean dictionary, but as you see, uh, as you saw, sometimes it doesn't work because of simplifications, etc. So, and same for Chinese. I, I learned Chinese somehow the same way, and I felt very frustrated of not being able to look up these common words like very easily. And that's that's why I, I really felt the need for this uh, for this tool. Question. Yeah. How do you handle if I put in work? Mm -hmm. So like also see as a verb only a noun. For example, I put in work when I get like pataraku and lambie and or I just get like vie. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Okay, so he, in the case of Japanese, if you put the okurigana, it's not going to give you results in more than Japanese because the okurigana. No, I mean work in English. Work. Ah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you if you put the word yeah if you put the word work in English, it's gonna yeah, give the, you all words. But the words are different. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the more specific you, you get, the less results you, you'll get. So if you type just work, you probably get like 50 results per language. Yeah, then you probably get a bit less results. I mean, yeah, it works. Then you get like ilhada, hataraku, etc. And kungzuo, and yeah. Yeah, in my book, I, yeah, I talk about, uh, well, that, that would deserve a whole presentation on its own, actually. <laughs> but yeah, I talk about um, why I believe, basically, that simplifying Chinese characters in all the countries of the Sinosphere was a big mistake, and that it should be reverted, and uh, yeah, basically. Uh, but I give good reasons for it, like I analyze the benefits of traditional Chinese characters in all the languages, so not just Chinese or Japanese, but also... Korean, Vietnamese, etc., and I analyze also the, yeah, the disadvantage of having a phonetic writing system for Korean, Vietnamese, and of having simplified characters for Chinese and Japanese, more or less. Okay. It looks like we've run out of questions. Um, Emmanuel has very kindly allowed me to give a little plug here at the end. Um, there's a couple of us who are thinking about organizing something like polyglot gathering for the Asian Pacific region. So if anyone is interested in that idea, There's, a, there's a polyglot conference in a place called Google Japan. Yes, yeah, 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 that's right. But this is more for Pacific, Australasia, Southeast Asia, rather than North Asia, I guess, but there's some North, potential for North Asia connections in there as well. 
So um, we're going to have a get together of people who are interested in that idea at 2.30 in the games area. Uh, so if any of you are interested in throwing some ideas in the mix, um, please come along. Um, it's the red seating area uh, in that main <coughs> centre part. So please come along at 2.30 and tell us your ideas about what would be good to include. Um, thanks very much, Emmanuel. Thank